Hello guys, welcome back again to another episode of the Babylonian Crypto Channel. So today we're going to cover this project called Tokamak. I think Tokamak is a very interesting one to look at because it fits very well with this whole uh, trending DeFi 2.0 narrative and they are actually solving a very real problem in uh, DeFi 1.0 and that is uh, providing sustainable liquidity. So we will go through how Tokamak works, what it does and uh, also this video is uh, meant to provide a very high level conceptual understanding that is explained in uh, layman words uh, on how tokamak works so that uh, we, you don't have to bother about all the jargons you just need to know uh, what tokamak is doing uh, as, as, a, as a protocol so i will say that tokamak is a decentralized uh, market maker some call it that or some say they are a liquidity service uh, provider okay so let's get into it and see how tokamak works in greater detail So before we begin, let's understand what is the current problem in uh, DeFi 1.0. So let's begin with uh, liquidity providers from the side of liquidity providers. So let's say uh, LP Bob, uh, he wants, he has $10,000 worth of Ethereum, okay? And he wants to provide some liquidity. What can he do? So he has to either pump in extra $10,000 worth of USDC so that uh, it has to be 50-50, right? Or either that he has to sell half of his stack half of his ethereum uh, to usdc so both ways are not good for him right because uh, the first way is that he has to pump in additional capital unnecessarily and the second way is that he has to lose uh, half of his exposure to uh, the ethereum price so that is the problem that uh, current liquidity provider face in exchange for those use that uh, liquidity providers get and the third point is that liquidity providers, they all face the risk of impermanent loss, especially when the ratio of the two tokens uh, deviates very far apart. So impermanent loss is something that is very common, is very well known to uh, all liquidity providers out there. And number four is he faces inventory risk. So inventory risk is meant by uh, you don't get back the amount of Ethereum in quantity that you put in. So after maybe three weeks or three months, you might get back less or more Ethereum uh, depending on whether the price of ETH goes up or down. So these are the main problems that liquidity providers face. And uh, later we will see how uh, Tokamak actually uh, solves them. So next is uh, as a protocol. So let's say if you launch a project, right? How would you provide, how would you kickstart and bootstrap this uh, liquidity of your tokens? So traditionally, right now in uh, DeFi 1.0, usually we uh, do it through uh, incentivized uh, pool 2. So pool 2 is meant by, let's say if I have some uh, Luna tokens, right? I'm, uh, I'm the founder of Terra, right? And I want to provide liquidity for Terra. So how do you do it? You can either go to some decks like uh, Osmosis or PancakeSwap, but you only have this Luna token. How do you make people, how do you create a marketplace where people can buy and sell Luna, right? So Typically, you pay it with the protocol's uh, native token. So for example, Osmo or Cake. So this is also not really good for the liquidity providers because they, again, they don't get back the same amount of tokens and you are depending on the individual DEX uh, token. So you uh, have to gain exposure to the price of uh, these DEX, which is something that you might not want to get involved in, right? So that is the first point of uh, pool two. Second is uh, incentive rewards. So this is, uh, again, a very uh, toxic way of... Uh, uh, you farming that is uh, happening right now. So for example, like you want, I want to incentivize people to provide liquidity on uh, Mirror, okay? So how do you encourage people to provide liquidity? You give them rewards. You give them your own native token rewards. But what happens is usually people, they see like high APY, they go in, they farm and dump. So this is what we call a mercenary capital or liquidity locus and, and a lot of uh, new protocols in DeFi 2.0 are actually trying to solve this issue, including uh, Tokamak. Or the third point is just uh, traditional market making. So you just pay like a hefty sum uh, to a market maker, to a centralized exchange or to like some expert uh, uh, market maker to help you do all this. Or fourth is you don't even know how to do it because this is actually quite a complicated process, right? If you think about it is you need to have finance background and let's say if you're a gaming company you probably wouldn't know how all this liquidity works so this is the problem from a protocol DAO perspective 
And we can all agree that liquidity mining promotes misaligned incentives that add sell pressure, skewed TVL metrics, and it is doomed to decline as soon as uh, incentives are seized. So we see this happening all the time, repeating again and again from uh, one chain to another, from one DEX to another. So this is the current problem that uh, DeFi 1.0 is facing right now. So how does TokenMax solve this? Well, if you take a step back, if you look at like how we transition from uh, Web 2.0 to Web 3.0, last, so last time internet allows transfer of data, but now uh, blockchain allows the transfer of value, right? And second is that if you think about it, the, the boom of the internet really started uh, when broadband comes about. Because before that, it, you need a lot of complicated servers, you need a lot of uh, expertise to go and set out uh, all these server farms and it wasn't until like Amazon Cloud or Google Cloud or Microsoft all these uh, uh, user-friendly servers uh, come out that it allows all this uh, bandwidth of uh, data to transfer very efficiently. So again, Tokamak position itself as sort of like the bandwidth of liquidity. So right now, uh, if you want to allow for the transfer of value very efficiently, you need to have very efficient liquidity. And right now, the liquidity is inefficient and it's unsustainable. So Tokamak is going to do this by becoming a liquidity service provider. So how does it work? This is a brief overview uh, from their Git book. So you can uh, read more about it in detail. I will link down below. So to start off with, there is this uh, Genesis pool, okay? So this Genesis pool has Ethereum and USDC. So this would be considered one side of the liquidity pair. So you can, as a liquidity provider, you just you can just uh, deposit Ethereum or USDC, and in return, uh, you get some to rewards, uh, token rewards back uh, as as incentives. So you just deposit ETH or or USDC, then you get uh, token rewards back. So this is the first part of the liquidity provider, and the second part of the liquidity provider will provide their own native token. So this is what we call uh, the reactors. So let's say Aave, right? Aave wants to uh, work together with Tokamak to provide liquidity. So what it can do is it will set up the, this reactor and it allows liquidity providers to provide single site staking. So they just deposit their Aave tokens inside. They don't have to uh, buy additional $10,000 worth of USDC and they also don't have to sell 50% of their RV. So they can just provide, let's say they have 100 quantity, they put in 100 quantity, they get out 100 quantity at the end of the day. So you get back a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio, there's no inventory risk, and there's no impermanent loss. So that is the benefits of uh, liquidity providers. Then on the other side, you have also what we call the liquidity directors. So liquidity directors, so usually what liquidity directors do is they will stake their TOKA tokens in these uh, individual reactors. And these stake tokens actually represents vote to tell this reactor where shall we direct this liquidity. Okay, so let's say if we look at this uh, example, this diagram here, right? Uh, some liquidity, some a group of liquidity providers put in Aave uh, on one side. And usually these liquidity directors would be the protocol uh, DAO itself because they are the one that has the incentive to direct liquidity, right? Usually normal people wouldn't care where this liquidity goes. It is more for the DAO itself. So this individual DAO, they will stake their TOKA. And then with this stake TOKA, they can say, okay, I want to take Aave and I want to pair it with Ethereum from the Genesis pool. And I want to send it to Uniswap or I want to send it to SushiSwap or I want to send it to some centralized exchange. I want to send it wherever I want. So I have a, I have a power, I have a say over it depending on how much my voting stake has. So from the protocol side, you can see that uh, protocol down, they will exchange their tokens for, to uh, for TOKA tokens. Okay. So let's say if I want to bootstrap my liquidity, I will give all my tokens to TokenMac and to ask them to, hey, uh, I want to set up a reactor with uh, you guys. So they, they will give me uh, some token rewards. Then I will use that token rewards to stick into these reactors. And I will become sort of like the liquidity director. And I will direct where this liquidity, I want these uh, tokens to be. So that is uh, in a nutshell uh, how it works. So then the next question is, how do you actually prevent impermanent loss right, for 
this uh, this guy over here how does he get back one to one there are uh, different layers uh, how to compensate them so the first one is uh, through this reserves so this reserves is uh, over here over at the first step when they set up a reactor remember they have to exchange their own tokens to set up this uh, reactor so these uh, tokens will be sort of like in a, in, a, in their reserve and it will be used to compensate the uh, liquidity provider for any uh, decrease in their token let's say if the ratio uh, breaks off or either that it will use the stake tokens in the reactor or either that it will through their protocol uh, own assets like through liquidity fees or whatever they will be used to uh, buy back some tokens to uh, compensate for this liquidity provider so that's how token map works uh, in a nutshell very simply so in short we can think of one token is equivalent to one unit of liquidity so how much are you willing to pay to direct a one dollars worth of liquidity for your own tokens so i hope this gives you a better understanding of uh, how token map works and right now i will show you a very brief uh, quick walkthrough of their whole dashboard and how it looks like so if you go over to their website, this is uh, how it looks like. So this they have these uh, core events, right? The collateralization of reactor events. So over here, you can see all the big blue chip names, 1inch, Aave, and these are all the winners so far. So they recently just uh, ran their first round of uh, the core event. So there's uh, Frex, Alchemix, TracerDAO, OlympusDAO, and SushiSwap. So these five are the winners. But if you just look at all the big names here, right, you can really tell uh, the people place a lot of uh, significant importance on the value of what Tokamak it provides, right? So that's why this is something that uh, you might want to look at. You see uh, even Abracadabra spell is also here. Rune is also here. Synthetic, Link, Matic. And, and I think in the future, there, there will be many more uh, to come. Lah. So if you look at over at the token map here, so this is again what uh, I mentioned, the Genesis pool. So this will be one side of the liquidity. So right now it's either Ethereum or either that USDC. And over here you can see these are all the individual reactors. So these protocols, this DAO, they will uh, eventually have a say uh, over where should this uh, liquidity be directed to. So in the future, when the staking goes live, uh, you will have people staking Toka over here on the opposite side of these reactors. And this APY on the individual reactors, right, they will rebalance itself. So let's say if there are a lot of uh, Alchemix tokens staked here, but not enough people are uh, staking their Toka tokens here. It means that not a lot of people are redirecting this liquidity, right? So they will increase the use uh, here and then uh, people will stake their Toka tokens here and vice versa for the other way around yeah so this is how it works in a nutshell and i think this uh, project is very interesting to look at and you can see that their next upcoming uh, core event uh, synthetic is here torchain is here illuvium rari capital and uh, abracadabra and, and many more la. okay so i hope this gives you a better idea as well as a better understanding of what tokama is trying to do as well as the uh, problem they are trying to solve so their solution you can see that it helps both uh, the protocol as well as both the liquidity provider so liquidity providers they would give out their use the fees the 0.3 percent fees that they will have earned uh, on the dex in exchange for toka rewards and also in exchange for zero percent impermanent loss and also they don't have to uh, sell half of their stack or buy additional capital they can just single stake their native tokens so that's uh, the, the good thing for liquidity providers as, as well as protocol it helps to bootstrap and and abstract all this whole process back end process of liquidity uh, in a very simple way uh, or outsource it to token Mac. So that's a basic idea of what token Mac is trying to do. So I hope you find this video helpful and I would appreciate if you can support by helping to like this video as well as share and uh, if you would like to see more of such content please subscribe to my video and I will appreciate it. Thank you so much and I'll see you again.